to make a couple quick reminders. Um, next Tuesday is launch day for Transform 20. Woohoo! I hope you guys are all pumped up and excited. So um, make sure I made a video in the team page yesterday with just like some highlights. There's the video on the Beachbody Champions page that's about 45 minutes long that has tons and tons and tons of good information. Check out the Coach Online Office as well as I put some, um, I put all the price information in there, the, those little photos. There is an error though. Um, Courtney Carlick, one of my Canadian coaches noticed, there's an error on one of the prices for the, the graphic for the, the Canadian cost. So if you have Canadian clients, just know about that. Um, it's just, it's a typo on that image, not from the coach on the office, but for that image. And there are before and after pictures in the team page. And then Jess also has the transform 20 info group going. So, um, make sure that you guys check that out. And there is also a commitment form. If you guys want to fill that out, get you, get excited, get pumped up. Um, that would be really awesome. All right. So we are going to get started. Um, I'm really excited to introduce you guys to, um, Kelsey, um, tonight. She's going to be speaking. Um, I will have her share a little bit about her story and then share with you guys some uh, expertise um, one minute, Mom, um, with you guys. But Kelsey is the founder of Team Ride or Die. Um, she's one star qualifying. She's helped two of her personally sponsored coaches get to Diamond this year. She's an SC5 legend. She's been coaching for about two and a half years and she describes herself as a cr chronic quitter. Um, now a gold digger and um, we are uh, in an elite um, premier push group together i just absolutely love her vibe and energy and her tattoos um so i wanted to uh have you guys learn about what she has to share with you guys um she's going to talk to you a little bit about her story and then she is um she said she's really good at teaching about working in power pockets. So I think you guys are going to learn a ton from her and take it away. Kelsey. Cool. Okay. So hopefully you'll learn a ton from me. I think that you can. Um, I will start off with saying that um, I tend to have squirrel brains. So if I start like ranting on something and you're like, damn, this girl is like going off on that and she needs to calm down, just like type in the chat squirrel or something. I'll, I'll hone it back in real quick. <laughs> but, um, so as Leia said, I, I always say like, I w used to be a chronic quitter. Um, and so my little MO right now is chronic quitter to gold digger because anything in the past that didn't light me up I instantly was like mm, nope not for me um so I am a mom of a 10 year old little boy which is like still insane to say out loud he just turned 10 and if you look at me you're probably like what yes I had my son young um I was 19 when I had him and kind of for a long time was like coasting like okay I am I don't have a college degree. Um, the first thing that I started and stuck to and found a passion with was photography. I still do it. Um, so I'm a mom, I'm a photographer. And when I first started this, I was a mom, I was a photographer and I was an account executive for a credit card processing company. So I had about this much time to do anything so I wasn't necessarily looking for something else to put on my plate um but I had been through I'm gonna call it a series of toxic relationships because it was one long one that ended um and then it kind of rolled into just a couple mini ones and the end result was not good um I found myself in this position where it ended up being a really pivotal point for me, but I let this human into my life that was not good for me or my son, and it turned scary. It turned to the point where I actually needed to get a restraining order on this man, and I was in this position, like, 
I sunk in literally to my core where I was like, how, how did I let this person into my life? How am I here now? And I've always been one to kind of want to place blame on the world instead of taking ownership for where, where I am. I've, I had always been there. I had always been like, why are these things happening to me? Right. Like, I think we've always, I think everybody has asked themselves that question at some point in their lives. Why me? And usually I would take that and use it as an excuse to not push forward and not succeed and blame the world for why I was where I was. But I, like I said, I was at this pivotal point, like, okay, I have this little boy I'm almost 26 years old. Like, Kelsey, what are you doing with your life? Where are you really going? I, it's not like I didn't have an income and I couldn't afford anything. I was definitely living paycheck to paycheck, but I wasn't desperate financially yet, but I was desperate emotionally. I had no idea like what I wanted out of life or where I was going. So at this point, I wasn't living in my own home because like I said, I had a restraining order on this man. I was terrified to live in my house because he tried breaking into my home. And I needed a way, I felt like I needed a way out. I was like, there has to be something. There has to be a sign. I was staying at my parents' house at the time, literally doing what we all do, scrolling through Facebook. And I came across someone's post. And I know Leia said this earlier, her coach that she came across just looked so happy. So I came across somebody that literally it was a business opportunity post. And I am one of those dream coaches because I came across this post and at first I'm like, mm, fucking scam. No, no thanks. Scrolled past it. Right. And I think that like, there's several of us that have been there too. Like you think everything's a scam. You don't want to trust this person. You don't want to put anything on the line for it because you're like, is this really going to be something that I can do or is going to work for me or this is bullshit? Um, so I saw the post, I kept scrolling and then something brought me back to it. I'm like, where I am right now, how am I going to judge this girl and say like, okay, this is BS. Like who was I, right? Like I was in my parents' house in their guest bedroom because I needed a way out of where I was and I knew that I needed to make a change. So it brought me back to this post and I was like, okay, I'm gonna reach out to this girl. I reached out to her solely for the business opportunity, signed up that day. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, like at all. I was just like, yep, I need to change, let's do it. I committed myself instantly. I signed up, like I said, I was one of those dream coaches and I didn't even sign up like, oh, I need to lose a bunch of weight. I had no idea, like, I had no idea where I was, like, physically. I never knew that I even needed to lose weight. I felt, like, okay, but I had definitely been, like, doing too much drinking and Netflix and, like, just, like, <laughs> I had said something earlier that I had so connected with because as a mom, it's like, okay, I love my kid, but, like, I really just need to get him to bed so that I can, like, just binge watch Netflix and have a glass of wine. So I signed up with her. I did 21 day fix. I lost 13 pounds in three weeks. And I was like, holy shit. Like I wanted to shout that from the rooftops and I wanted to tell every single person. And honestly, guys, Haley Christian's my coach. If you don't know who she is, you should, but she was not the person that I signed up with. I signed up with somebody else. This person quit. And when I signed up, it was kind of like we were like success partners and then I like surpassed her and then she was like, bye. So um, I can't say that I was taught instantly how to be a good coach or I had all of these trainings like all of you do that are in here right now. You have access to success. You have access to Leia. You have access to her upline. You have access to whoever is like willing to help you and lay the foundation so that you're not out there like 21 day fix and 80 day obsession and transform 20. I'm so excited. And just posting graphics everywhere. I had no idea what I was doing. It didn't start off right for sure. I'm not going to blame like the reason that I'm not like more successful on that. I definitely like feel like 
my business is at this point where it's ready to blow up and I'm so excited about it. Um, but it was definitely slow. And I want to say that these past six to eight months is where I've fully committed and I've started growing my team like crazy and I'm having so much fun with it and there's just no regrets. <laughs> so I hope that you guys all get to a point like that. But I have, since I started this business, I have never had a single doubt in it getting me to where I want to be. So you need to really like get to the point where like, I believe in this and I know that it can be something for me and I'm willing to take every single friggin' fiber of my being to get there. Okay. Because we all have shit. We all have stuff going on. And I know, look at my girl Faith, right? I'm not, she's there. She is breastfeeding a baby right now. She has three kids. She wakes up at 4 a.m. every single day, guys, 4 freaking a.m. Works a full-time job, has three kids and coaches and is diamond. Like you cannot say that you have an excuse. That's like for me, when I started, like I said, I was a photographer. I was working full time. I had, I still have a child. He's not gone, <laughs> but he was very involved in sports. Thankfully, he's not as involved in sports right now because I would go nuts. Um, you make it work. Okay. You have to find those power pockets. You have to find the time where you're willing to put aside all of your excuses and do it anyways. I'm going to say within the first six months of my business, half of my enrollments that I sent out were done on the friggin' toilet, on a bathroom break, or um, on my lunch break. And I'm not kidding. Okay. Like I was working full time nine to five in a basement every single day and then working weekends as a photographer and coaching on the side. And the second month that I was coaching, the first month, like I don't really count because I signed up and I was like, wait, like, you know, into the workouts and trying to figure out what the hell I was doing. Um, the second month I hit SC24 and my second paycheck was almost $700. And that's when I was like, damn, like, this is not a joke. Okay. <laughs> Cause that was like, for me at that time, that was probably two, two normal paychecks, um, in that one week. So it's so doable. And if you're being intentional with the time that you have, if you work a full-time job, respond on your lunch break to people. Okay. Like send out, if you have time at night, send out a ton of messages at night, have your, um, your, do your connections, then do your follow-ups, then do your story views on Instagram, then go through your new followers, like whatever your pattern is that you want to exactly do. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what that is because it's different for everybody. Me, I, um, wake up every single morning at five, 30 to 5 45 I meditate this is like I, I don't know if you're into that or not this is what I do okay so I'm just throwing these things out there <laughs> um I wake up at 5 45 I do a meditation and I hold this for my challenge group so anybody that wants to be in on that meditation they can come on a zoom call like this I hold a guided meditation we meditate then after I meditate, I write a list of I am's. So I am an elite coach. I am a leader of leaders. I am debt free. I am 10 star diamond. I am a homeowner. Uh, whatever it is that you want to be and you might ne not necessarily be yet, write your list of I am's. Then I go into my list of gratitude. Like what am I grateful for that day? I'm grateful for my fiance. I'm grateful for my son. I am grateful for meditation. I am grateful for energize. I am grateful for whatever it is that you're grateful for. And honestly, genuinely grateful for write it down, start your day, setting the intention for like those things. And this morning routine, it doesn't have to take a long time. Um, but your, I am your, uh, your, what you're grateful for. Then we generally do like a 6am workout it's a Zoom call as well. Not everyone has to be on the same um, program whatsoever. 
Um, I know this has nothing to do with power pockets, guys. I'm sorry. I just like got off track when I'm telling you about like kind of how I start my day. Uh, and so this is, is not how it used to be because when I stayed up really late, I definitely wouldn't be waking up at 545. But that's how I set the intentions for my day now. In the past, power pockets were key. Working from the bathroom. Um, yeah, anybody. Yeah, go ahead and absolutely. If you're EST, sorry, see, like, I, this, <laughs> I need to, like, not pay attention to the chat because I'm like, what? Okay. Um, yeah, anybody can join it. Um, message me. I'll send you the link. It's five. We generally do meditation 545 or 6. I have like a whole group chat where I tell them like what's going on If because my son was in the ER a couple weeks ago. So I had to be like, guys, I'm not meditating tomorrow morning. That's fine. My power pockets used to be, you know, working when and wherever I could. And that's what you guys need to do. And you can't come up with excuses. It needs to literally be like, okay, I'm at work and I, you obviously have to be present at work or you're going to get fired, right? Like you have to do the things that you need to do. I'm not telling you like, oh, you should be inviting to the coaching opportunity the entire time that you're doing your full-time job. No, I'm saying work within the time that you have. Do those power pockets in the bathroom, on your lunch break. Then you're, you can't tell me that you work from like 8 a.m. to midnight. If you do, like, please, you need to, I don't, I can't even, you need to be doing something else. <laughs> and if you really do that, like, <laughs> reach out to me. I'll try and help you come up with a plan. Um, you have time within your day that you can find to be doing those things. So let's say, the hours that you do have, we're going to call this intentional work. All right. So say you do work a nine to five. When is your intentional work? Is it five to seven? Is it seven to nine? Is it nine to midnight? Whenever you don't have kids running around when you can, or you could have kids running around, you can get them like playing a game, whatever. Um, number one, be present in what you're accomplishing, okay? So when you do need to do your work, turn your friggin', uh, <laughs> I can't say turn your phone off. We work on social media. Turn it on do not disturb, okay? Turn it on do not disturb if you're in your Instagram and you need to be responding to messages or you need to be sending messages out. Turn it on do not disturb. Make your time block. So what is your time block gonna look like? Um, I swear, I legit had a paper around here of my, give me one second, I'm going to look for it. Um, but your time block could be responding to messages. It could be, um, I'm going to find my team's checklist real quick that I have for them. Uh, um, but it could be responding to messages. It could be sending messages out. It could be adding new friends, uh, just the general things of a power hour, but your time block needs to be like your, your biggest goals obviously aren't going to happen if you only have an hour, right? Like if you, if you're like, I really want to plan a, uh, group sneak peek. I want to plan a sneak peek into coaching. You're not going to do that in an hour and have all of your content laid out. So you're not going to put that as like, your number one task within an hour. You're gonna do that if you have like two to three hours to sit down and plan things out. So if you have an hour, that's when you're gonna do your power hour and when you're gonna respond to messages and when you're gonna talk to people. So you need to list your, your um, actions in priorities. So what is most important? What are the things that are going to gain income for you? For me, it is sending out messages because if I send out a hundred messages, then I'll probably get 20 to 25, maybe 30 people that respond. And within those 25 to 30 people, how many people do you think are going to like instant be instant signups? Probably two, if that <laughs> guys, this is like a whole nother, I could totally do a whole nother call on this, but the fortunes and the follow-up and within the first 
two times that you follow up with somebody, they're not going to sign up. It literally takes, and this is real stats, it takes nine to 12 times for you speaking with somebody for them to uh, feed into what you're trying to, I don't want to say sell because I still, like I have such a hard time with that word. I feel like it's not what we do, but it does take nine to 12 times for you having a conversation with somebody and them and you reaching out for them to trust you. And that's so crazy because I feel like half of us quit on the third time. Maybe even before then, half of us reach out one time and we're like, oh, okay, you're not interested. Sorry, I even, sorry. I just, uh, I didn't mean to bother your life. You can't do that. <laughs> like, you have no idea how many times did it take for you. Think about how many times it took for Leia talking to you for you to finally feel like, okay, you know what? This is what I need and I'm going to do it. I guarantee you it was probably more than once unless you were like Leia or, or I and you instantly were like, I need a change. Let's fucking do it now. <laughs> it's not common. It really isn't. Um, so hold on. I just saw it. Uh, so for my power hour, literally on the top of my team's power hour, it says it's not about having time. It's about making time, right? And I have, um, or not power hour, I'm sorry, daily checklist. So I have their rise and grind time, five minutes of me time. So like taking five minutes to yourself. And I do this every morning. Like I don't, I never used to do this. I used to have my phone in my bedroom all the time. Not a good habit, guys, especially if you have a spouse, significant other, they feel neglected. They, you know, we work on social media. Don't bring your phone in the bedroom. I plug my phone in outside of my bedroom, literally like right outside my bedroom. Um, I do have like a Fitbit Versa or whatever, like a watch that I wear to bed that like vibrates to wake me up. And then I walk out and I turn off my alarm on my phone and I go and you can't really see it, but like behind me is my meditation corner. I have like a bean bag and a little Buddha guy and some um, meditation card, like I have all kinds of stuff where I'll just like come here, I'll sit there for five minutes, decompress before I get my meditation ready for my girls. So I do five minutes of me time. Um, I do my I am and my gratitude list. I meditate. Then I have like pre-workout on the list, workout, shake, personal development for my power hour. I always invite at least 10 people a day to the coaching opportunity. Um, I have 20, like, this is what I have for my girls lined up, okay? Sometimes I do more or less, it depends on the day. 25 natural conversations and invites. So, like, your natural conversation where you're, like, reaching out to people. I know Leia, like, works a lot through Facebook. I work a ton through Instagram. So, my natural invites are 10 tend to be through hashtags through Instagram. Like I'm tattooed. I have blue hair. Um, I am a boy mom. Uh, so whatever, I know that she's really great at speaking on avatars, whatever those things are, search through your hashtags so that you can connect with people through your hashtags, right? Like you can literally search like one of the hashtags I use a lot is blue hair. Don't care. <laughs> um, or the, the brand of hair coloring I use is Joyco, um, or ta like tattooed people. I like, don't want to say it, but like a lot of tattooed people can get pretty dicey because I feel like a lot of tattooed women tend to be, um, suicide girls, which I'm like, not about trying to promote to like, you know, nude people to, <laughs> like nude models to start coaching. I feel like that could like definitely be difficult. Think about like literally the person that you want to talk to and that you want to start coaching exactly like Leia has talked about with your avatar. Um, then I go to, I comment on 10 people that I have, that I'm not actually friends with. I comment on their photos generally again through hashtags I do at least bare, bare minimum 50 new follows a day. That's not hard guys on Instagram. You can follow like 50 to hundred 
new people in no time. It's literally click, 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 let's go. Um, I check in with my challenge group. I check in with my challenge tracker. I check in with my challengers. I check in with my coaches. And then I check in with my team page. Um, and your power hour may look similar, but like I said, working intentionally is key. Uh, and making sure that it's the hardest thing ever. Um, Kristen, when I talk about avatar, it's just basically like the person that you would want to be a part of this with you. Um, like my avatar started as who I was and like who I, I used to want to attract exactly who I was. Now, like, honestly, Leia just spoke on my team call right before this and talked about not only attracting, like, who, who you were, who you want your customer to be, but, like, who you want your potential coaches to be. Um, so, I know, like, uh, avatar is, I guess, a weird word to put for it, but your potential customer, your potential coach. Um, so, anyways, be present with exactly what you're doing, try and work intentionally, um, set timers. Setting a timer is huge for getting work done. I don't know about you guys, but like I work really well under pressure. So if I know, um, like, okay, you have a goal to hit, like, let's get ready to hit it. If it happens to be, which I rarely ever get, let it get to this point, but say it happens to be like the 30th, um, or the 31st, like the last day of the month where it's like, you're, if you don't hit success club, then you're not going to be a legend. Or if you don't hit success club, then, you know, so I get to the point where if I'm under pressure, I make it happen. Um, I've been at like SC four before and hit SC 10 in one night because I'm like, no, I'm not going to let this happen. I need to make it happen. Um, and yeah, Faith is awesome because she actually has breaks at work where she has to make stuff happen. Um, I, she actually, she has to go into a room at work to like pump. What, I don't, I don't know. What's it called, Faith? <laughs> Your room. <laughs> so Faith goes into the lactation room. There you go. A lactation <laughs> room. She goes into the lactation room to pump and she'll do, do you know, her power pockets within her pumping time. And that's when she gets a lot of her invites done. Because like I said, she has three kids at home, all under five, running around. She's clearly like breastfeeding one right now. And she makes it happen. So she is one of my greatest success stories. She's one of the people that is super motivated. I think that like one of the things as coaches is trying to like motivate your coaches and get them to be as excited as you and to be running with things like you are. Um, but guys, this is doable if you have a busy life and you need to stop using your busyness as an excuse and decide I'm, I'm busy. Yes. I'm going to use it as a reason to rise above and to show people that regardless of how busy you are, you can still be successful and you can still make this work. Um, so Sorry, I rant and I like go on and on and on. If anybody has any questions or anything that they want to ask, um, I think that like when it comes to this business, trying to be present in what you're doing when you're doing it is key. Uh, I always have called myself the Tasmanian devil of entrepreneurship because I, there's never been a moment where I don't have a lot going on. And just to give you an idea, like that was where I was, was photography, um, account executive, coaching, child. Now I um, am still a photographer. I work very minimally for the credit card processing company at home. Like I probably want to say, I don't know, less than, less than 10 hours a week. Um, it's a family company. So I feel like this, like I, I'm always going to be semi attached to it, but coaching is my main source of income. 1000%. I've grown it to the point where I can survive on it. I'm really excited and proud of that. Um, and 
shit, what else was there? <laughs> like, I, feel like I just randomly lost my train of thought, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy that I've gone to, like, from where I was to where I am, oh, that was what I was gonna say, I'm not planning a wedding, I'm engaged, and Enga- you can't even see it, because my light is so bright, but anyways, I'm engaged to an amazing man that I met, um, probably within six months of when I first started coaching. He's incredible to my son. Um, so not only am I coaching, am I doing photography, I am engaged in planning a wedding and mentoring all of my girls and doing everything that I can to can do to be an incredible leader. Um, so it never slows down guys. And there's always going to be a reason to have an excuse. And right now I could be like, oh my God, I'm planning a wedding, so I'm just so busy, and I can't lead people, but that's my reason. I'm like, I'm planning a wedding, okay? I need to afford this shit, and I am excited as hell to see where this brings me, and honestly, I can hear him out there. I hope he doesn't get offended by this, but um, this is my main focus. I'm getting married in May. I'm getting married in less than six months and I'm putting more effort into this because I know that the longevity of this and where this is going to bring me and bring us and us as a family is going to be much more than a wedding like our wedding is going to be one of the most amazing days of our life no matter what but this overall is going to be part of our income and our livelihood and where we get to help people grow and transform their lives. So it's not just about me. It's not just about us. It's about the world. Like in my opinion, it's about all these women that we get to help come from where they were to where they want to be. So like, is that your goal? Are you looking to help people or are you just in this to like make a quick buck? Because that's not where, that's not what this is. I think if you're on this calling, you know that it's not going to be like instantaneous money. It's going to be like, you need to lay the groundwork, put the work in now during these hard times where it feels like, well, it's the holidays. I should slow down. No guys, the holidays is like three days out of these next three months. Okay. Like one of my coaches that I was talking to the other day, thank God she's not on this call did not show up for four days and I was like excuse you like (laughs) first of all my coach is drilled into my head you do not not show up a day on social media I don't care what you're going through post a fluff post with a picture of a of you and a quote you cannot not show up that is detrimental to your business first of all second of all four days Thanksgiving was one day I would maybe, maybe accept that one day, one day, okay? But four days in a row, like, people are going to be like, wait, all right, I'm going to go with the girl that showed up every single day. So keep that in mind. Um, If you have any questions, go for it. Hopefully you got something from this. Like I said, I tend to rant, but it's generally motivational ranting. (laughs) I loved your rant. (laughs) Thank you. Lots of really great tips. Does anybody have questions? I would love to see if you wouldn't mind sharing your um, checklist. Um, And I think Faith, I don't know if Faith's is different if it's oriented to just the 15 minute packets. I would love to see those too. If you wouldn't mind sharing that. That would be awesome. Of course. Um, I'll definitely, I'll share it right now, but I'll also send. Yeah, you can send it to me after the call tomorrow. No big deal. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so my, my checklist is pretty simple. I'm not sure if Faith uses a different one for her 15-minute power pockets. Um, but the one that I use is decent. I don't know. It's the one that I use, so. Yeah. Um, I, I loved what you said about really, like, being present. And I know that um, – that's something that I still struggle with. And I, I can say for sure that being um, a coach and working a full-time job and then being a full-time coach, honestly, working a full-time job and being a coach is easier to manage your time. And you you may not, you may think that sounds absolutely insane and crazy, but when you have 
six hours of time alone without your kids when they go to school and you have to get all of these things done, you're like, ah, oh, I have so much time. It's so much harder to be present. And I kind of, I, I kind of have like ADD. So I'm like, I'm like this and my head's like this. And I'm like trying to do all these things. I'm like, no, one thing at a time, be present. Like I am, I'm like faithful to my checklist that like makes me survive. I only get shit done because I have a checklist because <laughs> otherwise I'm like, I want to do everything. But when you have like a 15 minute pocket and you know, that is the only time, the only time in the next two hours that I have to send messages, you're going to send messages because you have no other time. When you have two hours, you're like, eh, I'll do it in like an hour. I'm going to go do work at my workout. And I'm going to check some Facebook. You, it, it's harder. It takes way more discipline, way more discipline going to a full time job then when you have more time it's easier and it may sound it's counterintuitive but i promise you and i know not just me but everybody else i know that's gone to full time it's a huge transition it was a huge struggle for me my business dipped for a couple months when i went to full time because i was like squirrel brain totally lost i'm like what the hell am i doing um so discipline just like you know with us a, a routine right just like you're, you have a schedule when you have a program, you have a plan when you eat your meals. If you have a disciplined schedule in your day, you're more likely to get stuff done. If you know what the most important things are to get done, just like Kelsey said, which is what are the things that are going to make you money is scrolling Facebook and looking at every, no offense, like looking at everybody else's posts on our team, like my post, Rose's post, Everybody else's posts, reading our posts and we're on your team, is that making you money? No. Like if you're in a pod and you're going to comment on other people's posts, that, that's great. But do the things that make money for you. Reach out to people. Have conversations. Send messages. Send invites. Make a post. Those things first. And then when you have spare time at the end of the day, then you can, you know, scroll. But for sure. I totally I like, agree with everything Kelsey said. Good definitely, stuff. like, when you work, like you said, you work well under pressure, so when you're working that full-time job, it's almost like a constant pressure, right? Like, because you know, all right, I just worked six hours at my normal job, so now I only have a couple of hours to make sure that I get all of this done before I tuck my kid in, and blah, 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 blah. So you have that you still have that thing hanging over your head. Like I need to get this done no matter what. And then when you go to like full-time coaching, you have more time so, to like kind of be like, oh, this is nice. Well, like if I want right now, I can take a bath. Without <laughs> my kid coming in here taking a shit, you know, like, so, <laughs> um, I get that for sure. Uh, and it's so true. You do need to like, once you go full time with this, find your drive with it. And that's why I think that setting timers is so crucial because for me, if I'm like, all right, I set a timer for an hour. I only have an hour to do this, or I only have 30 minutes to get done what I want to get done. Like guys, when you hear that timer go off and it's like, you're like, Oh no, no. Like I need to be done now. So when you see that timer ticking, it makes you work against that clock and kind of set that, set that, whatever, the power pocket for you to like get those things done and make sure that they're done. Um, and Trish, when it comes to waiting to reach back out to somebody who doesn't respond right away, your girl right here. Um, like I said, I work a lot from Instagram. And one of the things that I do every single day is go through my, uh, the people that watch my story. Okay. And right now I have like, I don't know, probably 600 to a thousand people that watch my story every day. And I, I'm not going to say every single day I get to the point where like I can reach out to every single one of them because that would take a long time. But for the most part, I get to catch 90% of the people that are watching my story every day. And if I have sent them an invite and they haven't answered, I always follow up. And if they haven't answered and I sent it the day before, 
I will follow up the next day. And I literally, I call them out and this is exactly what I say. I'll read it to you right now. It might not be for everyone. And I'm not saying that this is the way that you need to approach it. This is the way that I approach it because it's what's worked for me. And I'm straight into the point and I like to call people out on their shit. So if somebody doesn't answer me, I say, because I only say this if they're still watching me, okay? I say, not sure if you saw my last message. And then I use like this emoji where she, you know, she's like raising her hands. Um, See you still watching me with the eyes. I know life gets crazy sometimes, dot, dot, dot. So that gives them a chance to be like, oh my gosh, yeah, like I was still watching you and just, <laughs> so, and I have very infrequently, I have had people that still don't respond after that, um, but for the most part, they'll give their excuse as to why they didn't respond. And some, t like a lot of the time they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, like I was busy at work, blah, blah, blah. I'm interested in the, because my, First follow-up, I always end with, are you interested in what I do health or business-wise? Leave it as an open-ended question. If they don't want to do fitness, then they can say, oh yeah, totally business. And if they don't want to do business, they can say, oh, like I just wanted to get in shape. Generally, if they say just business, I'm like, cool, well, they go hand in hand. Um, or if they say just fitness, I send them I have a video for everything, guys. I have a video on my YouTube where I talk about what a boot camp entails. I have a video on my YouTube where I talk about what coaching entails. Um, I always, for the most part, run monthly sneak peeks into what coaching is. Um, recently, I did a coach internship for a week. So I always try and switch it up and see like what's working and what's not working for me. Um, but for that specific thing, I say that, and then they respond, um, and it creates a conversation or they'll just say like, oh, sorry, like I just watch you because you're motivational and you're funny. And I'm like, okay, cool. Totally. Like, and, but I keep the conversation going with them. I don't want to be like, oh, well, you don't want to sign up today. Like I'm done with you. Like I still ask more about them because when you're talking to somebody, you want them to know that you're interested in what you can do to help them. Um, you never want it to be like, okay, cool. Bye. Like just, even if you say, that's awesome. Like, so thank you for your support. Keep in touch or turn it into like a question. Tell, like, I would love to learn more about you. Like, where are you from? What do you do? Right? Like turn it into a conversation. Um, you're, your conversations with people or your content on your page should always be to instruct, educate, entertain, and empower. Those are like the things that I keep in mind. Like you're either going to instruct them and help them. You're going to educate them and help them decide, make them an ed, help make them make an educated decision on whether they want to change their life when it comes to health or fitness entertain like I just am a goofy human being I'm all, I have always been awkward and I've always like just I've always been what's it called I think I'm like I want to say I'm an ambivert because I I think that's what it's called <laughs> honestly google it but I am wicked outgoing most of the time but I definitely have this side of me that is like super introverted and when I'm around people for a long time I'm like Okay, like I just need like these moments to r crawl into a ball by myself and not talk to anybody. Um, so I can be very entertaining, but then I have this side of me that's like, I need to retract for a little bit. And then my big thing always is to empower others and try and make everybody around me or anybody that I come into contact with leave feeling better or good you know? Um, so I guess that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, overall, again, if you guys have any questions or any, any, um, statements or anything that like you want to know, like how I go about something, totally ask me. I want to say 
last year I was at like 2000 followers. I'm at 18,000 now on Instagram and it has been crazy (laughs) for sure to get my following up like that. It's been a lot of work and I wish that instantly guys, once you get your following up and you get more eyes on you that you can turn that into working coaches and people that connect with you. But that's not the case. It takes so much more than that. And I'm like, totally, I want to, I think it's been since, um, December of last year, I was, I want to say December of last year, I was probably at like 2,500, maybe almost 3000 followers. So it hasn't even been a full year and I've grown at almost 15,000 followers, but I'm still one star qualifying so it you're not instantly going to create people who want it as bad as you do and it's all about the consistency and not you can't make people want it like you do right you just need to live your life and try and show them show them what you're doing and the actions that you're taking and the things that you're doing to get to reach your goals and hope that along the way it'll click with them to get to the point where they're like, yes, this is what I want. And that's all I have to say. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Kelsey. Loved your call. Anybody else? Last questions? Last call, last call. No. All right. Thank you so much, Kelsey, for, um, for speaking on the call tonight. I will share with you guys in the team page the checklist that she shares with me if you guys want to see those to help you manage your time better. But I loved your, uh, I loved your, your energy and your enthusiasm. So I really appreciate it. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Bye. Good night.